Magandang umaga sa inyo mga kaibigan. Nandito na naman tayo upang magkaroon ng mga bagong kaalaman about sa pagsusuot ng postiso. Good morning, Chris. Good morning, Charles. So today, we have some visitors with us. We have Dr. Brand Damage and Dr. Babae Maraman. So ngayong umaga, makakasama po natin ngayon si Inang Lokresya at ang kanyang anak na si Empurita na nanggaling pa nakipagsapalaran mula sa bayan ng Marawi. Good morning po, mga Gina. Good morning po. Kamusta sa Marawi? Kamusta ang hindi mo nasundalo doon? Ayun po, yung kalahate, yung mama na, yung kalahate, nasa akin ngayon po. Can you give us a little background about what a denture is? Okay. So, ang um, denture ay artificial na ngipin kung saan pinapalitan niya ang mga nawalang ngipin, specifically ang mga natural na ngipin natin. Meron tayong iba't ibang klase ng postiso. Meron tayong tinatawag na RPD o Removable Partial Denture kung saan may natitira pang ibang ngipin. At meron din tayong tinatawag na C o complete venture, kung saan lahat ng ngipin ay wala na. Oh, I see. So, ngayon naman, itanong natin ang ating mga visitors tungkol sa kanilang experience o kung ano ang kanilang problema tungkol sa pagsusuot nila ng pustiso. Okay, so, Miss Eparita, ano ba ang problema mo sa pustiso mo? Ay, ganda naman na po. Ang problema ko po kasi is yung pustiso ko, hindi siya, ano, fit. Lagi siyang nakukulog pag ako'y nagsasalita. Tapos yung sa baba pong pustiso ko, nagsisiso po. Hindi po ang makapagsalita ng gusto. So, Miss Emberita, matanong ko lang po, bakit hindi niyo pusuot yung pustiso niyo? Kaya ko po siya nilis kasi pag sinusuot ko po siya, may bubol din po siya sa taas. Tsaka nahihirapan po yung suot, masakit. Mm, may bukol! Okay. Ngayon, Doktor, ano po kaya yung bukol na yun? At ano po ang mga possible causes? Ito po ay tinatawag na toray. Pag sa taas po, torus palatini. Or sa pag sa baba naman po, mandibular toray. May mga iba't ibang causes po yan. Minsan, nagiging cause ang genes, um, vitamin deficiencies, calcium deficiencies, or trauma. Minsan naman po, nagiging cause po ang masyadong malakas na pagpuya pag kumakain. Hmm, I see. Okay, well, Miss Eporita, can you tell us po, bakit kayo nag-umpisang magsuot ng pustiso? Ganito po kasi yan. Nung bata po ako... Uy, alam mo ba, nung Valentine's, binigyan ako ni Mark ng flowers, saka chocolate. Tapos ang sweet-sweet niya nga, pumunta pa kami dun sa park. Uy, tapos alam mo, ang gwapo-gwapo niya, tapos ang tangkad niya, tapos ang puti niya. It's beautiful life, beautiful day. 너의 기억에서 내가 살 텐데. Beautiful life, beautiful day. 내 곁에서 머물러줘. Beautiful my love, beautiful your heart. It's beautiful. Ayan mo na, balikan ko. Ba't kasi ganyan yung ipin mo? Ha! Panis! Gucci gang. Oh. That's it right now, Tina. Low pump. Yeah. Gucci gang. Oh. Oh. Big head on the ring. Gucci gang, 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 Gucci gang. Spread their rats on new chain. Yeah. My bitch love do cocaine. Okay, ang pangit na naman ako. Ish, talo na naman ako. Sinasira daw ang ngipin ko. Tapos, hindi ko pa makausap yung crush ko. Tingnan mo naman yung ngipin ko, Nay, ah! 
Oh, sige anak, hayaan mo. Punta tayo kay Mang Kepweng para payos natin ang ngipin mo, okay? Talaga, Nay? Oo. We have bonus structures that we should consider before making dentures. First is the limiting structure like TPS or posterior palatal seal. It is the one that limits the denture. Posterior palatal seal. It is the junction of soft palate and hard palate. Next in line is our supporting structures like the hard palate. Posterior lateral slope. An oblique ridge located along the facial aspect of the mandible. Attached point of the buccinator muscle, the muscle of our cheeks. Also, we have the buccal shelf that is broad, flat surface of the posterior mandible. At the posterior part of the mandible, we, we can see a pear-shaped pad called retromolar pad. So, we also have your relief areas that should have space so we can We have your structures like the genial tubercle, which is a tiny bony structure located bilaterally on the lingual foramen. And we also have your crest of the alveolar residual ridge, which is the highest surface of the ridge. We also have your mental foramen, which is located on the anterior surface of the mandible. And also your incisive foramen, which is located on the palate, posterior to the central incisors, which both descends slightly with the people who don't have the, the whole teeth, who has uh, a dentulous teeth. Maganda akong baga po. So, yun po, nandito tayo sa aking clinic para sukatan ng bagong postiso si Miss Emperita. Umpisahan na po ah. I'm your skull, I'm made up of 22 bones I protect the all-important brain while it calls me its home I'm your skull, I support the soft tissue on your head A framework of bone or cartilage, this knowledge I spread The cranial bones are the first lesson you learn about These eight bones make up your cranium to protect your brain without a doubt Frontal bone is a bone found in the forehead region shown here The two parietal bones, one on each side of your head, just appear Two temporal bones form parts of the side and the base of the cranium structure The occipital bone joins the parietals along the lambdoidal suture The ethmoid bone in the skull separates the nasal cavity from the brain The sphenoid bone is at the center of the skull as I just explained I'm your skull, I'm made up of 22 bones I protect the all-important brain while it calls me its home I'm your skull, I support the soft tissue on your head A framework of bone or cartilage, this knowledge I spread Onto the facial bones, there are 14 of them shown here The bones that make up a portion of your face in which we endear Here's the mandible, the only movable bone in the skull I 
said And two maxillae, one on each side of the upper jaw and your head The vomer bone joins the ethmoid bone to create the nasal septum in you Two palatine bones and the maxillae complete the hard palate, it's true The two nasal bones form the bridge of your nose Two zygomatic bones form the shape of your cheekbones as this picture shows Two inferior nasal conchae are located in your nose as well Two lacrimal bones run lateral to the maxillary bones, they're swell I'm your skull, I'm made up of 22 bones I protect the all-important brain while it calls me its home I'm your skull, I support the soft tissue on your head A framework of bone or cartilage, this knowledge I spread I'm your skull, I'm made up of 22 bones I protect the all-important brain while it calls me its home I'm your skull, I support the soft tissue on your head A framework of bone or cartilage, this knowledge I spread It was okay. The dentures were good. However, after a couple of months, we were not uh, we were not the same. Uh, my face, especially my jaw, mm -hmm. it was kind of unstable. Oh, oh ha, no, my jaw was just a little bit. Yes, po, sayo na po, hindi po namin alam kung paano mm -hmm. Well, good news for you guys because today we have three world-renowned doctors with us. We have Dr. Caitlin Malionas, Dr. Jane Salazar, and Dr. Rika Langai. Good morning, doctors. Okay, so mga doc, can you tell us or explain to us how and why is this happening to Mr. Sana kami? As well, since they were involved in an accident, uh, he acquired fractures on his facial skeleton as we can see with the movement of his mandible but na but this is not only the problem here the loss of his teeth but there are some underlying complications okay doc medyo nose teeth tayo siyan masyadong big word ang mandible paki explain doc so here i have a picture here of a uh, skull so, ito po ang bone ng jaw natin, or this is the mandible. In case of Mr. Kalil, we can see that his jaw is not only functioning properly, but its physical characteristics are also altered considerably following the loss of his teeth. Medyo nawala po ang prominence ng kanyang jaw there. Okay, so Doc, meron po actually tayong question from one of our audience. Please welcome Ms. Teresa Bulosan! Hi, Tai! Kamusta na kayo dyan? Okay po, Ms. Teresa, balik po tayo sa question natin. Uh, good morning po, Doc. Uh, as po lang po kasi yung kanina, for years yung inabot niya. 
bago mag lum, bago lumit yung bone. So yun sa kanya kasi 6 months lang. Paano yun? Okay, so to answer the, the question of Ms. Teresa, we will see the progression of bone loss caused over time by wearing dentures. Here is a healthy lower jaw. Note the height of the bone. Now, once teeth are lost, the bone will no longer be stimulated by the teeth roots and will begin to resorb due to disuse. Similar to loss of muscle due to diminished use, as much as 40% of bone mass can already be lost in the first 6 months. Placement of a denture replaces the teeth. However, bone loss continues as there is no bone stimulation. The added factor of traumatic atrophy from the denture pounding the tissue and bone can cause further bone loss. In order to maintain the same facial features, the denture tissue base must be increased in size. With more time, there will be even more bone loss. And once more, the denture base needs to be increased to compensate for the additional loss. Continual readjustments and refittings of the denture don't stop jawbone from shrinking away. The denture becomes more and more loose even with this compensation as the bone continues to resorb. So apart from the resorption process which is causing Mr. Khalil Sana kami to notice some changes in his appearance, we also have displacement of the jaw. Now, usually, fracture of the edentulous mandible will cause attachment of the muscles on the posterior part to move. For example, the myelohyoid muscle which is found here will become relatively higher up on the lingual side than when the teeth were present. In addition, since there are no teeth to absorb the energy of the impact, these fractures will cause the mandible to be displaced. This combination creates a situation where extreme downward or backward angulation of the anterior part of the mandible occurs. Okay, so Doc, paano po natin ito maayos? Well, many fractures in edentulous patients require no active treatment at all, okay? So, if the fracture is simple or no little displacement, it will heal eventually. Mm -hmm. So, uh, unless ganto lang siya, uh, the patient will refrain from uh, unnecessary movements mm -hmm. and will just stick to soft diet. So, that's oh. it. Okay, so Doc, what do you think would be the best treatment for Mr. Galil Sana Kami's case? So, one of the biggest problems of any type of dentures kasi is that it accelerates bone loss in the jaw where the teeth are missing. So, the pressure of the denture on the jaw bone causes it uh, to shrink. So, it eventually causes rapid aging symptoms. So, like yung sunken lips and cheeks and then yung collapsed bite. Yung parang kay Popeye. So, for about 10 years, due to the jaw shrinkage, the denture will not fit anymore and will be loose all the time. And it will also need to be replaced by another one, which will fit the shrunken bone tighter, but which will also continue to cause more bone loss. Now, for uh, Mr. Sanakami's uh, case, dental implants would actually do the same. I, I mean, opposite. So, that would be his treatment because dental implants prevent bone loss. Uh, when an implant is placed in the jaw bone, it takes the place of the natural tooth root, which will prevent its shrinking for the duration of its existence. So, when the teeth are placed on these implants and stimulation of the implants from the chewing will take place. So now, the bone jaw is stimulated to remodel instead of shrinking and disappearing, like it would with a denture prosthesis. Okay, so that would be the treatment plan for Mr. Kalim Sana Kami. It would be dental implants. Now, since model naman po si Mr. Kalim Sana Kami, um, na-assume namin na kaya niya naman na po i-provide sa sarili niya yung dental implants. Hindi <laughs> na po sasagot din ng salamat po yun. So that is it for our show this morning, everyone. Thank you for watching. Salamat po. And we hope you enjoyed our short video.